four value in the grave set is the value of collective organization. The ability to become part of something that's larger than yourself, of which you're not attached to by virtue of clan or kinship or ethnic or religious background necessarily, but is greater, it's much larger. So now we see groups of people which extend beyond the typical range of clan or tribe of 250 to 300 people to thousands of people, often uh, organizations that can have hundreds of thousands of people, even millions, billions of people if you want to talk about large religious organizations on the planet. Right? And these organizations are clearly defined by the rules and laws that they establish. So four values are understanding what the rule sets and the laws to be followed are. They want to have structure and form. People are highly foreorganized. It gives them a sense of where to position themselves in relation to a hierarchical structure which is clearly defined and has rules and regulations about how you move through it. Right? So almost all academic pursuit is organized according to four values. When I pass these tests, I'm allowed into this grade level of the organization. Then I have new tests I have to take to get to the next grade level. I get this title. You know, I have a baccalaureate degree, I have a master's degree, I have a doctoral degree. I get to wear these you know, clothing when I go to the graduation ceremony, which indicates that I'm of this level of academic success, and blah, blah, blah. Okay? Um, same thing is true of large-scale religious and governmental organizations, civic organizations. Freemasons, something like that? Hmm? Freemasons kind of hmm? speaks to that as well. All the fraternal organizations and sartorial organizations, they're all organized in that way. So sororities and fraternities, four organizations. And people who are there really like the comfort of being part of something which is greater than themselves, where they understand how things are organized, where they fit, and how to do things. Right? I just saw the uh, movie version, uh, the new movie, I should say, the, the current version of Les Miserables. And in Les Miserables, what they did is they uh, showed this character who is the gendarme, you know, the, the police officer who's chasing... The, the main character, Jean uh, Van Jean? Jean. Van Jean? Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean, thank you. So the main character, Jean Valjean. And he's totally organized according to the four value set. It's the law. I represent the law. You will follow the law. If you break the law, then you have always broken the law. There's no going back. You know, you will, and, and this is the kind of thing. So if you're organizing, your products or services to appeal to an audience who has high four values. You want it to be highly structured. You want to give them the sequencing and the steps and the, the way that they can fit into whatever it is you're offering. How it will work. How it will unfold for them. How it fits into the organization that they're a part of already. Okay. At the five value set, Graves begins to explore for us people who seek primarily based on opportunity. They're looking for ways to advance themselves within a highly structured environment. So remember, four is already in place for five to evolve and emerge. These are evolutionary steps in the grave model. One can only happen after the previous one has been fully explicated. So four is fully explicated. We have large societal structures, as I said, religious, governmental, bureaucratic, fraternal. All those different kinds of structures are now in place. We have hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who belong to these structures. Fives now come about, and they can't necessarily progress as quickly as they would like through the organization following the rule set that's established. Or maybe the rule set precludes them from moving through it at all. So one of the great four organizational structures were monarchical. So when you have a monarchy, the way modern monarchies work is they work based upon the history of your bloodline. If you're not born into the monarchy, you can't get into the monarchy. Right? The old three monarchies were based upon who had the biggest club and can use it best. So you could displace the king and become king. In the current monarchy, you could displace the king, but the nearest kin becomes king. There's a sequence which you can never bypass for all intent and purpose. You'd have to overthrow the kingdom. Well, fives understand this, and they want to move through the system in the ways the threes did. They want to stake out territory for themselves. They want to have space of their own, which is opportunistically organized. And so, therefore, what they do is they look for cracks in the system, you could say. Where are their unresolved issues? Where are their 
opportunities for me to come and provide a service, a solution, a product that would be interesting or desirable for the folks there to have, which would let me bypass the standard hierarchical movements. So rather than having to work through the system, in order to become the dean of the school, spend 50 years in the schooling system, first as a student, then as a professor, then as an administrator until I finally get to be dean, well, is it possible that on that lot next to the university I could open up a new school and I could become dean tomorrow? <laughs> you get it? That kind of thing. And this is the way the five thinks, is they're looking for opportunities. So they're opportunistically driven, and their sense of achievement or their sense of having accomplished what they set out to do is often materialistically rewarded. How much money did they make? What possessions were they able to get? The idea of position and title is far less important to the five than it was to the three. However, people who have high five values often have a lot of residual three values as well. So you'll find a lot of status seeking among people who have high five values as well. So the rewards that are material, if they can be material and status driven, are going to be absolutely amongst the most desirable. And what you see now is in modern retail environments, for instance, a whole category called luxury goods. And luxury goods are designed to be appealing to the person who has achieved the wealth required to own them. And they also carry brand recognition that the person who owns them must be of a certain caliber of individual to possess them. Get it? So this is really appealing to a five. And if you're in the luxury goods market, you better understand how fives think. However also be useful for you if you're in a luxury expert market to understand that as well. So you could deliver massage therapy again using that example to people who are in every level I've mentioned so far. One's because they might physically need it because of the situation they're in. Two's because it's part of a cultural thing that's done within that group. Three's because they are actually constantly stressing themselves and striving. They have physical needs and enjoy the physical sensual pleasure that massage brings. Fours because it's part of a regimen that they also indulge in, maybe health giving or, or medical in some way. And if you structure it, you lay out the reasons and the categories of access and why, very appealing. Fives, luxury wonder, you know, the sensuality, the epicurean delights of the massage and the way you provide it, okay? The environment you provide it in, all of these things would be appealing to a five. 